and welcome to airgunweb.com, your home for honest, real-world airgun reviews and information where we bring you the facts, not fluff. A lot of manufacturers are introducing new quiet air guns. Generally, air guns are already pretty quiet, at least compared to firearms, but given the popularity of the sport and that more and more people want to enjoy it in their backyards, any reduction in noise is a good thing. Today's review is of the Stoger X20S, which is Stoger's entry into the quiet air gun arena. It has an integrated baffling system that we'll talk a little bit more about later. It took a lot of convincing from viewers for me to give Stoger another look, especially after the X50, but I'm very glad that you all pushed me to review this gun. When I test and review a product, I want to highlight the strengths of the primary product and not be limited by the inferior optics most manufacturers bundle with their air gun combos. The factory 4x32 scope would not really show what the rifle is truly capable of achieving. So I replaced it with the Leaper's 4x16x40 AO MDIR scope. You can see how that process worked out by looking up episode 4 of Take Aim. You can find a link to that episode on my YouTube channel or visit my website www airgunweb.com. So now with the upgraded optics installed, let's take a close-up look at this rifle. The Stoger X20S is an example of a typical brake barrel rifle. The stock is all-weather composite that feels well-made and comfortable. The profile of the gun is very sleek with a nice bull barrel and some checkering on the forearm and grip. There are no open sights on this rifle, which ships as a combo. Soger ships a compact 4x32 illuminated scope, which has a long enough eye relief to be comfortable, but the lack of an adjustable parallax made it really difficult to shoot at 10 yards. So I replaced it with a 4x16x40 AO MDIR scope from Leapers and it made all the difference. The rifle is ambidextrous with raised cheek pieces on both sides of the stock. The Stoger X20S has the standard Stoger automatic safety, which is located at the back of the receiver, making the rifle truly fit for both right and left handed shooters. The trigger feels as if it was cloned from a Crossman Phantom. It's terrible. The long second stage is just way too long, horribly long, and it makes it really tough to get good groups from the bench. As a sporting trigger, I'm sure it's fine. What makes the Stoger X20S stand out is that it is amazingly quiet. Their marketing puts the noise level at 94.26 dB. My own tests confirm a dB of 95 while shooting outdoors, and here's why. Stoger did not just throw an oversized muzzle brake on the barrel. They built in an integrated silencer complete with baffles. This is the real deal here, and it really works. The Stoger X20S is built on the very simple, yet efficient, brake barrel design. What I noticed immediately was how easy the gun was to cock. While not a youth gun per se, certainly younger folks could easily handle this rifle. To get the Stoger ready to fire, you simply cock the barrel, load the pellet, and then close the barrel. In the process, the automatic safety is automatically engaged. It's located at the rear of the receiver and is equally easy for right-handed or left-handed shooters to use. Once you've set the safety to fire, you simply point the gun in a safe direction, disengage the safety, and squeeze the trigger. All looks like this. I believe the Stoger X20S is primarily meant to be a field gun and not necessarily a target gun. The reason I say this is that the trigger is pretty awful. It has a pull weight of a little over 4 pounds and it's relatively smooth, but the length of the second stage is just way too long. Now I understand the reasoning of this design, but it makes it really hard to shoot accurately from the bench. When we get to the shot cards for this review, I'm actually going to talk you through each one so that I can demonstrate what I mean here. With all that said, if you can master the X20's trigger, you can get exceptional groups out of this gun. But before we get to the shooting tests, let's talk a little bit about performance. I 
our Stoger X20S took a pretty good while to finally settle down. I would guess that it took between three or four hundred pellets before the velocity really stabilized and we started getting decent groups. Now once it did finally settle down, I was very impressed with the consistency of the spring power plant in the X20S. Here are the results using the RWS Hobby Pellets. They're 11.9 grain. You had a high of 784, a low of 774, an average of 778, with an extreme spread of only 10 feet per second and a standard deviation of 3 feet per second. The average energy was 16.02 foot-pounds. Our best pellet was the H&N Field Target Trophy Pellet. They're a 14.6 grain pellet and they gave us the following results. We had a high of 712 feet per second, a low of 700 feet per second, an average of 705 feet per second, an extreme spread of 12 feet per second, and a standard deviation of only 3 feet per second. Our average energy was 16.18 foot-pounds. It's pretty typical to see that kind of consistency out of a more expensive European air gun. But this is a $220 Chinese import. Stoger may not have impressed me with their X50, but I'm certainly impressed with the X20S, at least so far. Let's move on to our accuracy test and see if this trend continues. All right, so let me go ahead and walk you through this. Um, we've got six shots in this group. The first three, everything's going great. And then all of a sudden in the fourth shot, the trigger got the best of me and I pulled it. And I shot a little bit low. So I went ahead and followed up with two more shots and they landed right in the bullseye. If we take that errant shot out, you're looking at a .37 inch center to center group, which is pretty doggone good. Well, certainly not my best group. Uh, this is a standard five shot group and the second shot hits a little low, but really the whole group shot just a little bit low. Uh, we still did pretty doggone well with a 0.382 inch center to center group. Uh, not my best, but hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. In this group, we've moved out to 20 yards, and we're shooting outdoors. The first couple shots uh, were a little high, and then the last three shots basically go in the same hole. This is the pretty typical results. Again, with a better trigger, I would expect to get better groups, but still, you're looking at a .48 inch center to center group at 20 yards. Not bad. So here's our final shot group of the day. The first lands right in the bullseye, and then the second shot, the trigger got the best of me, and this time I pushed it to the left. I followed up with four more shots just to see if I could get them in the bullseye, and sure enough, each one landed right where I needed it to. If we take that flyer out of the equation, you're looking at a .238 inch center to center group at 20 yards, all out of a $220 air gun. That's very, very good. So here's my scorecard for the Stoger X20S. Let's start with the cons. The biggest con that I have for this gun is just the trigger. I know there are some third party options out there and I plan to try one in this Stoger to see what kind of a difference it makes from the bench. You all can follow the progress via Twitter and Facebook and of course my website www.airgunweb.com. The other con is more directed directly at Stoger. You have a great gun here please stop bundling optics that are not suitable for air guns. At least bundle a scope that has an adjustable parallax so that we can enjoy the rifle's accuracy at closer ranges. Here are the pros for the Stoger X20S. It's an absolute joy to shoot. And if you can master the trigger or replace the trigger, then I bet you can get quarter inch groups at 20 yards. 
if not for the trigger, our last group at 20 yards would have been under quarter of an inch center to center. So the potential is definitely there in this little gun. The power is very consistent and the weight and feel of this gun are also far better than I would have expected. It also came very close to their expert sound level analysis, measuring a mere 95 dB on my Radio Shack dB meter. This makes the X20S one of the quietest air guns to date. So let's put all this together with our final summary. I have to admit that the Stoger X20S surprised me and I've been shown yet again not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because I did not like the X50 does not mean that everything from Stoger will be the same. The X20S sits right in that $200 window and sells for about $220 at Pyramid Air. Now, if I had to put the Stoger X20S up against, say, the Benjamin Trail NP, which is only an extra $10, I'm still going to have to pick the Benjamin Trail. But, if Stoger were to put a better scope on this gun, it'll probably tip me the other way. I want to take a moment and thank the folks at Pyramid Air for providing this rifle in this review. I also want to thank Leapers for continuing to provide the optics for our reviews. When you're looking for your next air gun or looking to fill your next air gun supply order, please visit www.pyramidair.com or give them a call at 888-262-4867. Please be sure to tell them that you heard about them here at Airgun Web. And be sure to visit my website at www.airgunweb.com for links to all the products used in this review. For up-to-the-minute updates and information, join us on Twitter and Facebook as well. When you're looking for honest, real-world airgun reviews, think Airgun Web where we tell you the facts, not fluff. I'm Rick Utzler with airgunweb.com. Thanks again for watching.